The reading this morning is John chapter 18, verses 33 to 37, and in the Church Bible it is page 1087. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. It was your people and your chief priests who handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You are right in saying I am king. <clears throat> in fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. We should invite Vicky up, our sister in Christ. It's a privilege to invite you here. She's one of our own, <laughs> and um, I know you're at St. Hugh's, so thank you very much for coming with us this morning. We look forward to hearing what God has placed on your heart. Let's just pray for you. Father, I just want to thank you for Vicky and all that you are doing in and through her. We praise you for bringing her to us this morning. And so, Father, may your Holy Spirit just anoint her and fill her. Thank you for the word you place on her heart. And we pray, Father, that you help us to, to receive and to hear your word, Lord. Thank you, Father God, we praise your name. It's amazing to be back. It's a bit of a home away from home, um, and it's lovely to see some familiar faces. Um, and uh, yeah, so a little tiny update uh, about me. So um, I left Christchurch a couple of years back, and I was working at Azalea. And this year, it will be 10 years that I've been working at Azalea through voluntary, mission role, and then full time work. But I took the leap of faith um, with God um, and decided that I'd be moving on from Azalea. And I'm now joined the family at Youthscape and I'm absolutely loving it there. A real new challenge. Um, so I'm, yes, yeah, so that's where I'm at, at the moment. I've moved out of home, got myself a little cottage in Shefford. Mum's like really thankful at the back, <laughs> but um, yeah, so, um, and I'm still not married, so that's, <laughs> that's where we're up to at the moment with Vicky. <laughs> Um, but today we mark uh, the church's version of New Year's Eve. Um, next Sunday marks the start of Advent. And it's a day when we remember that Jesus is king of our lives. And it's not an ancient festival and a Christian calendar. In fact, it was only established in 1925. And it was established at the time when Europe was in chaos. Um, inflation was rampant and colonialism was at its complete worst. Um, the seeds of evil that would eventually grow into the Holocaust and World War II by being planted. And the Pope at that time established uh, the festival of the Christ the King to declare that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is King and he's the goal of the human's history, uh, the joy of all who would hear and the fulfillment of the man's aspiration. So we've just heard in the conversation between Jesus and Pilate, which we heard from uh, the Gospel in John earlier, allows John to reclaim his Gospel that Jesus is a King with divine authority. Jesus was accused of plotting to overthrow the government and he was being questioned by Pilate. This gave Jesus a chance to tell his side of the story. Jesus argues that his kingdom is founded on truth. And this is the contrast between earthly kingdoms which are founded on power. 
In fact, Pilate's kingdom was based on power. And in his mind's truth, what, that was what powerful, sorry, in his mind, truth was what was powerful. Um, and it was said the same is often true today. Jesus offered Pilate the same choice he offers us today and advance your status on earth or walk in the light of the truth. The choice we made will determine which kingdom we serve, God or man. Jesus saw the world differently, the way that the world sees the world. He defied logic by the way he lived and by what he, was, what he had been taught. He taught that the truth is a cornerstone of healthy relationships and strong communities. If something or someone claims to be the truth and has a violent intention or acts in a coerced manner, then that is not truth. Truth may be attacked, but it can't be harmed. It is not of this world. This is how the gospel speaks of the truth. This is why John's gospel calls Jesus the true and living way. Healthy relationships require confidence that both partners will tell the truth. And I'm sure we all win relationships with friends, with husbands and wives and in church. And that relationship is built on trust and in truth. We have to trust that individuals will do what they promise to do. And I, like, for instance, relationship with my mum. My mum says, I'm going to promise I'll do that. And I, in that relationship I have with my mum, I know that I, I trust her and she will fulfill that. Unfortunately, this is not always the case, and especially with politicians and what is going on right now. And again, I can say with my dad, um, he's promised to fulfill some things and he hasn't. So I can't trust him. In those relationships, there is a trust that you have to build. We're often manipulated the truth to serve our purpose, both by what we say and what we don't say. In contrast, Jesus always speaks the truth. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> it is hard for us to know what truth is today in today's world. To make matters worse, it's also hard for us to know who to trust there are a few honest heroes. There isn't a few honest heroes anymore. Just look at the former Tour de France winner, uh, Lance Armstrong. He had fame, fortune, but he lost it all because he chose to win by illegal and, and unethical means. There are a few authority figures. Um, there are still only a few authority figures that we can trust. Everyone seems to have his or, his own, his or her own agenda. Truth is essential to life. It's essential to a successful marriage and a successful relationship with friends. Society needs integrity in order to survive. Think of the terror that would exist if police officers was, were thugs or um, we would happen if we go into a pharmacist and they would dilute our prescriptive drugs into order to sell contraband over out the back door. And I'm sure that many people wouldn't like that. <laughs> We must remember that we are citizens of another realm with different rulers and different rules. And when it comes to spiritual things, truth is Christ. We leave behind anything else that has power over us. We follow the one that gives us freedom that no political power can grant. This kingdom is where Jesus will rule over our lives and the new heaven and new earth. One day, Jesus will return to earth to set up his kingdom where he will be ruler firmly over us and just dealy justly with the sinners. Until then, his kingdom focuses on redeeming the hearts of the lost. So what does it mean to say that Christ is the king of the world? It means that this is an unfinished world. There is unfinished business because the world has made up of unfinished people. And I'm definitely not finished. I've got a lot more work to be done within me. And I'm sure you can agree with yourselves as well. He has commissioned us to be his army so that, that his unfinished world becomes kingdom over which will he will remain, reign forever. Our gospel text focuses on part two of the dialogue between Pilate and Jesus. When Pilate asked Jesus if he was king of the Jews, it was a political question. If Jesus presented himself to the people, he was a rebel in Pilate's eyes and needed to be dealt with accordingly. Jesus was king, and indeed, he is still king today. He is the king who has come to judge all earthly kings and kingdoms. He is the king of heaven and earth, 
He is full of grace and truth. He is a champion. He fights our battles for us. He leads us to victory over Satan and sin. He sets us up to lead his kingdom on earth until he returns. <coughs> Sorry. His kingdom occurs when he will freely choose to serve him and not to sin. This is, in, this is in contrast to the worldly kingdom where power is obtained by self-centeredness and self-esteem. To love God is to become humble by paying the price of leaving people free to be who they will be. Jesus does not wink at our sins. Paul reminds us in Romans 1, 18 to 32, that even now Jesus is pouring out his wrath against those who think they can be better, make better sense of their lives than he can. As his ambassadors on earth, we have a duty to live constantly by our Christian faith and speak against anything and everything that there is contrary to that. The text is about to clash between the earthly kingdom and the heavenly kingdom, and we have to choose which kingdom we will serve. But we must remember that if we choose to serve an earthly kingdom, we will lose and we will struggle because just as Christ was victorious over death, he will be victorious over earth when he returns to set up his kingdom. Jesus was king, but he was not a typical king. He was a servant king. The symbol of his kingdom is the cross. Jesus takes the worst we have to offer and the worst form of torture imaginable and changes it into life and hope. The challenge of the kingdom for each of us is to let God be God in us, to let God be God in our church, and to let God be God in our neighborhoods, and to let God be God in our lives, our families, and in our world. In order to find meaning, peace, and purpose in our lives, we must ask ourselves, what is Jesus telling me to do with my life? <laughs> That's a crazy question, isn't it? You're like, oh, well, Billy tells me to have to move to Africa or something. Oh. When we do ask and listen for that answer, then we're expecting the power of the kingdom of our, in our lives. It is the duty of us as Christians to represent Jesus here on earth. The church does best when it is intimate with Jesus and we have no place to lay his head who bought a sin, so, sorry, who bought sight of the blind, helped the lame to walk, cleansed the lepers, made the deaf to hear, raised the death and brought good news to the poor. Just as Jesus' power was in the cross, so the church's most effective witness is in service and sacrifice to people in need. It's not political correction or specu specular connections or great architecture. When we're in Christ's presence, we should feel a sense of humility. Christ is our friend. Christ is our big brother. But we can't appreciate Christ's friendship or, or Christ's role as a big brother unless we acknowledge that he is sovereign and our saviour over the Lord. In John 18.37, the themes of John's gospel are re resonated incarnation, glory and truth. John's gospel is more concerned with Jesus' origin of, than the birth story. Although he was born of the Virgin Mary, the greater reality is that he came from God. He came from the great king, and he is a great king. He came to the world to show us, us this new kind of king. He was the power of love, not the power of the sword. He came to rule not over from a throne, but from the cross. He came not on a great horse, but, but on a donkey. He came not catering to powerful, but catering to the poor and the less fortunate. He chose his inner circle, not the powerful, but from the Larry and the meek. He calls us to be just like him. He calls us to take command and wield authority like he did. He calls us to give instead of a take. He calls us to love instead of judging others. He calls us to care instead of ignoring the plight and of the less fortunate. The truth of what Jesus testifies is the truth of the cross. And ever since in the dawn of Christianity, it seems strange that a man would become king by dying on the cross. Paul called it foolishness of the cross, but Jesus called it the truth. So I'm going to quickly close this sermon with these challenges for you, as you are the body of Christ and as a church and as individuals. To let God be God in us. To let God be God in our church to let God be God in our neighborhoods, and to let God be God in our lives, our families, and in the world. 
So Lord God, I pray that we will let you in, that we let you in on a daily basis to our successes and to our failures. I pray that when we are lost, that we come to you. I pray that we allow you to be God and we will give you the reins of our lives. We place our lives in your hands. And we do pray for Christchurch at this time. And we pray as a body of Christ for the PCC and the staff team that we allow you to be God in these situations. We thank you for your power and your presence today. Amen. Yeah, I think it's a very powerful word. That thank you very much, Vicky. It was uh, let God be God. Let God be God in me, in in each one of us, in our church, in our families, at work. You know, who is the king in our life or over our life? Who is our king? Sometimes we sort of wrestle with that image of Jacob um, in Genesis, um, the father of the nation of Israel. And he wrestled with his brother, his family, and he ended up wrestling with God. And I think sometimes we do that, I do that. We wrestle (coughs) because we're we're kind of the king. (laughs) I'm the king. So, Father God, we just, we pray, we, we ask for your help. And we ask that you help us to let go, to let our kingdoms go and your kingdom come. Vicky talked about you know, trust, trusting you. And Lord, we, we can't just trust someone overnight. It's a relationship thing. It's a walk. It's a journey. Christianity is a a journey with you, Jesus. We pray for your help. Help us to walk with you. Help us to let things go here at Christ Church in our own lives. And we want you to be king, but we sometimes we find that hard. So we pray that your spirit would continue to work in us Today, this week, the the months ahead, Lord, help us to let you be king, to trust in you, to be led by you. And Lord, we give you thanks and praise for who you are. You are that servant king. You are that servant king. And you did lay it all down. You laid it all down on the cross for us. And we praise you and give you thanks for that. For the gift that we get because of that. Holy Spirit, come and work in us. Soften our hearts, open our minds. Help us to hunger and thirst for you. Be king in our lives, Lord. Be king. Be glorified. So the blessing and the the, the dismissal. 
And Lord, we pray, you, we pray for help for each one of us in these words, Lord. Help us to go forth in the world in peace. Help us to know what that means, Lord, to go into the world in peace and not stress and anxiety, trusting in you, that you are God. May we be a people of good courage. Help us to hold fast that which is good and to render to no, e no one evil for evil, Lord. Strengthen us, strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help us to help the afflicted and to honor everyone. May we love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power that you give us to do so, that power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with each one of us always and forever. Amen.